and quite frankly, against the interests of the people of the state of Florida. We need a governor who's going to work for us. And that's why, that's why I've been unapologetic in saying that when we win this race, we're going to expand Medicaid for over 800,000 of the most medical people in this state. We're going to expand it. With the help of our legislative delegation, we're going to make it happen. And let me just tell you, let me just tell you, because I think it's important for us to understand the merits of why we've got to expand Medicaid, not just for the 800,000 who don't have it. It's right to do it because we got to treat health care as a right and not a privilege. I believe that. It's right to expand it for that reason alone. But for those of us who have insurance, uh, employee-based insurance, small businesses who are complaining that they can't get access to insurance because it's out of reach, for those of us who are watching our insurance premiums increasing year over year over year without prediction, the reason why we've got to make sure that that one in five people who don't have insurance in this state get coverage is because when they go to the emergency rooms, which is the most expensive and least efficient form of care, they almost always are arriving there at their most acute illness, which is why the cost is so much higher. So if we've got to pay it one way or another, why wouldn't we pay it on the smart end? Why wouldn't we pay it when folks were able to get access to a doctor, have a relationship, wellness, understand the steps they got to take to stay in good health? It's just smart. And by expanding it, not only will we pull down $6 billion that are right now being given away to other states, because Florida philosophically is against Obamacare or, or the Affordable Care Act, that doesn't make sense. It's, it's the same kind of logic that this governor used when Barack Obama tried to send us $2.8 billion to build high-speed rail across the Afro Corridor. It's the same logic. Do y'all remember what he said? He said, no. We, we don't believe in Obama's stimulus. And what happened? That money then got diverted to other states, and guess what California's doing? They took our money and they're building high-speed rail, right? Throughout their state. Can you, can you just imagine the number of people who could have gone to work? Uh, building, right. construction workers, engineers, architects. Imagine the amount of business that could have gone up or along the corridor, the, the improved quality of life for people instead of spending an unpredictable two hours in a commute across the corridor. You're able to get some certainty. And by the way, it's good for our environment. Yeah. Right? But when my, opponent, when my opponent was asked whether or not he thought that rail was a viable solution, he said no. Uh, that it was not a viable solution to solve the transportation problems of the state, that we need to build more lane miles. Now, we're, we're the third largest state in America. Uh, one of the fastest growing, that corridor, one of the fastest growing. Do you think we can actually asphalt our way out of congestion? We cannot. Right? We're, 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 I ain't cuss, Pastor. I, that was not me. That was not a cuss word. Asphalt is a real word. I may have exaggerated on a part of it, but nonetheless. We're talking about the future of transportation in our state, and that means... Uh, that we got to make some adult decisions about how this state is going to grow, that we maintain a good quality of life without sacrificing our environment in the process. Yes. When you all to let me govern, you're going to have a governor. You're going to have a governor. You're going to have a governor who actually believes in science. It's a revelation. It's a revelation. Because y'all know what we currently have. We have a governor who says he's not a scientist and can't say whether or not global warming is real. Right? We sit in a state that is surrounded by water on three sides. Rising sea level is real. Right? And if you don't believe it, you certainly uh, shouldn't be sitting in the office of governor stripping away the opportunity for state workers to talk about climate change and sea level rise. That just doesn't make sense. I'm no scientist either. I'm no doctor. But when I'm sick, I go see one. Hey. Hey. I go see one. So that is no excuse to have a dereliction of duty on the job. We've got a plan for the future of this state. And now the, the, the governor is going around running around like an election year environmentalist. 
I'm talking about the climate and, and what he's going to do about blue-green algae. No, we saw what you were going to do. That's why we're dealing with red tide and blue-green algae now. You had your chance. You had your chance. And you, and you ran that car right into the ditch. Right? We've got blue-green algae flowing out of the east and the west side of the state. Y'all know it best right here. We've seen it. All because we turned over the role of environmental protection to the biggest polluters in this state. Well, guess what, y'all? No more. When we win this race, we're going to put the word protection back into the Department of Protection. Hold big polluters accountable and build the kind of, build the kind of regulatory environment that people are supposed to have. Listen, our environment, there, I'll put it this way. There is no corporate profit. No CEO powerful enough, no interest big enough to be able to take away our clean air, our clean drinking water, our clean beaches and our oceans. And right now, they're running roughshod over us because we've given them the keys. Well, we're going to take those keys back. We're going to take those keys back and make this environment work for us again. All of us. All of us. When we win this race. When we win this race for governor, we're going to have a governor who believes that a woman is in the right place to make her own reproductive health decisions. Not a government, not a legislature, not a governor. Not, not any. When we win this race for governor, when we win this race for governor, we're going to have, see, I, Pastor, I get in the pulpit and they, they, I'm starting to, to, to preach if I can. <laughs> In, in the most secular way possible, however. When we win this race uh, for governor, we're going to have a governor who believes that we ought to pay teachers what they are worth. We pay teachers what they are worth. These are the, these are the people. I, I, I mean this sincerely. I would not be standing here today before you were it not for my teachers. Miss Linda Arvin, Miss Esty, Miss Estes, Miss Lula Fontaine, Miss Pat Binky, right? Dean Richmond, I, I, he probably don't think I'd ever call him out, but I'm calling him out, right? I remember those people. Uh, they lean me up on, they, they prop me up on my leaning side. They encouraged me, they pushed me. When I thought I had reached my limits, they pushed me further. It was those teachers who pulled me to the side and said, Man, you're bright. We think you ought to take honors classes. And I resisted, and they persisted, and they won. <laughs> and ultimately, I won. Because as, as the fifth of seven children, I became the first in my family to graduate from high school and the first to graduate from college. And it's thanks in large part to those public school teachers. in my opinion, do, to do the most difficult work. They're, they're in large part responsible outside of our parents to helping to shape, to mold, to inspire, to cultivate, to invest in, to pour into our most precious gifts, our children. And the fact that in the state of Florida, the average salary for teachers is the 45th lowest out of all 50 states is shameful. It's shameful. In fact, if my grandmother were here, she would call it a crying shame. Right? She said, some chains are worth crying about. Well, y'all, when we win this race, the first thing we're going to do is give the teachers of this state a wage and a raise that they deserve. They deserve it in this state. They deserve it. When we win, when we win, not only are we going to give our teachers a raise, but we're going to make sure that we're able to offer high-quality early childhood learning. 40%. 40% of our kids are starting kindergarten not ready to learn. They then spend the next 12 or so educational years trying to bring them to speed. And guess what the truth is, is when you start behind, you almost always stay behind. That is a tough reality. So if we know that all we need to do is invest earlier, more, more deeply, then why wouldn't we do it? We've got to do that. And... 
when I when our young people get into high school and right now because of the high stakes testing regime that we got in the states, which by the way doesn't tell us what our kids know, but how well they take a test. Right? We gotta bring that to heal in the state of Florida so that we can inspire kids to do the job that they're there to do, which is to learn, to explore, to enjoy the educational process. And at the same time, unleash the talent of teachers to do the job they're there to do, which is to teach. Right? To teach. We, we can't have the kind of economy. This is, I, I love education, but it is not education for education's sake. This is education because it is critical to the future of our state's workforce. If, we're, if we are not equipping our kids with the knowledge and the skills and the tools that they need to either go out and become entrepreneurs or to go into companies or nonprofits or whatever it is that they need to do, the companies make the decision that coming to Florida is not a good get. Why? Because Florida can't produce the talent that we need for the jobs that we create. Well, part of my mission is going to be to any entity, any company, any business that wants to locate in the state of Florida, my commitment will be if you locate here, we will be able to produce the talent and whatever the talent might be for the jobs that we bring into the state of Florida. But, but Rick Scott's vision of this economy as a low-wage economy is not my vision, right? All jobs are not created equal. If, if, if you've got a, if you're spending... 40 hours a week plus on a job, you shouldn't be paid a poverty wage. I'm sorry. It's a value statement. I'm not sorry. I'm actually not sorry. It, it is a value statement. Now, we all make, make different amounts based off of our inheritance, what we've done, our hard work. Uh, I don't begrudge anybody being radically successful. I'm simply saying that for folks who go out and, and work a full-time job, for you to earn a poverty wage is shameful. And that's why we've got to increase the minimum wage here in the state of Florida and make sure that people have dignity around work with them. Dignity around work. We talk about a job with dignity. I'm talking about a job that pays a good wage. I'm talking about a job that comes with some benefits. I'm talking about a job that has a retirement. Right? Those are the kind of jobs that we want to grow in this state. And I believe we can. We just need a governor who considers that a good aspirational goal for the people of our state. Right? When you all elect me governor of the state of Florida, you're also going to have a governor who believes in real criminal justice reform. Right? Oh, yes, on four, by the way. Oh, yes, on four. Oh, yes, on four. But four is just the beginning. Four is just the beginning because if, if folks return from uh, uh, their condition of incarceration back out into our society and they still can't get a job, right, because we have all these exclusions, which is why I'm proud to say as the mayor of the city of Tallahassee, we said we won't ask about criminal background history unless answering yes is the disqualifier. If it is not, we're going to measure you by your merits. Are you qualified? Can you do the work? Will you make a good employee? And if the answer is yes, welcome aboard. And let me tell you what we learned. Those individuals happen to be some of the hardest working people we have within our government. Why? Because they know what it means to be without. They know what it means to be denied. And when you have the dignity that comes around honest work to get an honest wage, nobody wants to give that up. But if we don't create opportunities, it's like water. It will find the crevices. we got to fill those holes. And make sure that we let not only those individuals know, but our young people know that none of them are disposable. Uh, one of the things that I think we have failed at doing in our public education system in this state, and it used to exist, if you were not on your way to college, and by the way, I want anybody who has the aptitude and the interest for college to get there. And I want them, when they graduate, not to graduate under a mountain of debt. Right? That is, a, that is a committed to that. But I also have to say, that at one point in this state, if you were not on a pathway to college, we used to have apprenticeships and woodwork and shop and mechanical and electrical and technical programs. Those kinds of curriculums that gave our kids a skill that they could monetize, go to work, get a job, and earn a good wage. And now we've extracted it all from the system. And we're literally telling half our kids, good luck. You want college material, and therefore, welcome to your low-wage job. That is not my vision. None of our children are disposable. They all have purpose. 
We just have to create an economy wide and expansive enough to assume them too. We don't have a jobs gap in this state or in this country. We have a skills gap. And so we now have to lean into developing the kinds of skills that are necessary to get the job done. It's incredibly imperative to the future economy of the state of Florida. That's why we have to do it. Now let me tell you, y'all, we, we're not going to be able to get there if we don't do our part. What is our part? Do we know? Oh, I can't hear you. What is our part? It is absolutely our job to vote. Let me tell you, and this is sobering news. We, if the election were today, we would lose. Why is that? Democrats have outperformed Republicans so far in early voting and absentee voting. There are over 800,000 Democrat absentee ballots that have not been turned in. They're sitting on somebody's coffee table in homes all across the state of Florida. Over 800,000. Do y'all know Democrats lost the race to the governor the last two times by less than 70,000 votes? Wow. We have got to get busy. They're bringing Trump in because they know exactly what, what I know. And that is, is that this is a 1% state. And if we're going to fall down on the job, if we're going to choose not to show up, if we're going to choose not to turn those ballots in, it creates the opportunity for them to do just enough to turn their folks out and walk away with this election. I got news for them. Not this time. Not this time. Not this time. Not this time. This is our time. This is our time. We have got to activate, motivate, organize like we have never organized before. We have to vote like our lives depend on it. Because our lives do depend on who the next governor is of the great state of Florida. Y'all so might ask it simple. It is simple. I need every one of us, if we voted early, fantastic. That ought to free you up now to get out there and organize some other people to get out and vote early. Today is the first Saturday of early voting and we ought to be blowing the doors off these places. Tomorrow is the first day of souls to the polls statewide, and we've got to organize. We cannot fall asleep on this one. The stakes are too high. The next governor will appoint three new Supreme Court justices to the state Supreme Court. Three. And you realize that now they have a, a complete grasp and control of the United States Supreme Court. They're going to be looking for test courts at the lower level that can send them cases to up in precedence. Mm. on a woman's right to choose, on uh, workplace protections, on the ability for folks to organize, on the environment, on the economy. You better believe they fought so hard for that, excepting somebody like Kavanaugh, someone unworthy of dog catcher. I mean, his temperament is that of a, of a three-year-old, and I, no offense to three-year-olds. I've never seen anyone show up like that. And you, I'm off track. I'm off track. It is, it is, it is important to understand what this big, grand fight is about. Uh, this is about our values. It's about who we are, not only as a state but also as a nation. Uh, and Florida has the opportunity in this election, uh, one to win, of course. But in so winning, uh, we have a chance to send a message to the rest of the nation. That America hasn't lost its way. That there is something still basic and common and respectful. We have a chance to do that. We got a chance to do that and we shouldn't let it slip away. And if I've got anything to do with it, we're not going to let this thing slip away. We're going to win this state. On the state. I believe that. We're going to win because we're going to do what it takes in order to win this state. We're going to turn on more voters. We're going to activate communities that hadn't voted before, and we're going to go everywhere. My running mate, Chris King, his wife, Kristen, my wife, RJ, my, my wife has been in Miami for several days. She's campaigning down there with uh, pr producer Ava DuVernay, a few actresses. Last week, she was with Tracy Ellis Walsh down there. Uh, uh, Kristen uh, has been all over. Uh, Chris, myself, we're going everywhere. We've been to red areas, purple areas, blue areas of the state, if that's why you uh, want to look at it, right? Uh, we went to Putnam County the other week, and people are like, what are you, Putnam County went 30 points for Trump, right? 
I said, we're going to Putnam County because there are voters in Putnam County. Right. And we showed up. And the facility didn't have room enough to receive everyone. They were flowing out of there. There you go. We went to, we went to Flagler County. Another one of them, Flagler. Again, double digits to the other way. We went there. Not enough room to receive everybody. We even campaigned. Some of y'all know this. We've now campaigned several times in the villages. Right? Some of y'all made the choice not to retire to the villages. We made the choice to retire right here, probably for good reason. It is one of the most conservative voting precincts in the country. 99% of the people there vote, and about 98.5% vote Republican. What are you doing in the village? We're going to the villages because there are voters in the villages. And we showed up. And we had this auditorium, 800 people flowing out of the back. And I presented myself there, and one elderly white gentleman stood up and said, I believe Gillum ought to be the next governor of the state of Florida. I want to. And then he said, he said, and I want to give you $20 to help you along your way. And of course, you know, we were gracious, but I thought to myself, this is the villages. I know you got more than 20 I just know it. I didn't say it. I just thought it. Though. I didn't say it. And then he turned around to the rest of the room and said, anybody else believes Gillum ought to be governor, I want you to give them 5 10 or $20. Y'all, we walked out of there raising nearly $6,000 in 5 10 hey. Right? In the place that they told me I wasn't supposed to go. Which is why we have to go there. We have got to stop treating the race for governor as if it's the electoral college. You don't win one county and lose another. Pick up one and lose another. You win by getting one more vote than the next person. Yes, sir. One more. And that vote may come from anywhere throughout the length and the breadth of our state so we're prepared to go there. We're going to leave it all on the field. But we cannot do this thing by ourselves. We may not win some of those counties, but guess what? We gotta lose them less. Right. 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 Sounds a little defeatist, but it's true. We gotta lose them less. We gotta run up the numbers where we can. Right. Yes. And in places where we may not win, we have to suppress yeah. our margins so that we don't end up losing and getting blown away. Right? right? The stakes are too high. Y'all, as much as I enjoy being the mayor of Florida's capital city, as much as I enjoy presiding over a city that's one of the fastest growing economies in the state of Florida, one of the fastest in the nation. I enjoy presiding over a city that is experiencing a five-year low in our crime rate, and we arrested fewer people in the process. And I'm proud of the work that we've done to win the tech hire designation. The same week uh, that Donald Trump pulled out of the Paris Accord, in my community, we broke ground on a 100-acre, 120-acre solar farm. Brian and Kim, I see y'all in the back, you all know it. Tripling the amount of solar energy that we produce. And we want to scale that up statewide. I love being the mayor of the city of Tallahassee, but I have to tell you, y'all, it is my sincere hope that the next time I greet you here in Newton, it will be as the next governor yeah. of the great state of Florida. Let's bring it home, everybody. Let's bring it home, everybody. Let's bring it home. Let's bring it home. Let's bring it home. God bless you and best wishes, everybody. Let's win and let's vote.